I'm Dave from boyinaband.com and welcome to day 5 of my 7 day song on Psytrance. Yesterday in day 4, I told you how to fashion some fancy pads and today we'll be kitting out the song with the essential FX and I'll teach you how to resample in Reason 5. More so than other genres, Psytrance relies heavily on samples and effects to keep the track sounding full. It's basically providing backing noises to assist the listener in entering that entranced state. And here, I've simply put an instance of Kong inside a combinator. As always, combinators just keep things tidy. And each pad triggers a different sample. I used redrum for the FX banks in the past in Reason 4, but Kong is a lot simpler, and you don't have to route each individual channel to a mixer channel to apply effects to each sound. They can just be added in the effects banks down here, just by opening show drum and effects, and so effects slots 1 and 2, and you've got the bus and master to play with as well. Much simpler. But yes, yeah, so I'll show you how I added the samples. I'll pick this new pad up here, and load one up to demonstrate. Simply Click the drop down in the drum module, select NN Nano Sampler, hit open, browse sample, and then just pick the sample you want. Load it in, and voila! All of these samples I've used are from the primeloops.com XXL Dance Effects sample pack, which is great. Otherwise, give the uh, Razor Effects pack a try as well. Either of those are awesome. In the case of most of the samples, I've made the samples only trigger for as long as the sample is held down, so the reverse is cut off as soon as I want them to. This is very easy to do. So let's uh, pick a reverse to show you. We've got this one here. And then as soon as I let go, it stops. All you have to do is go down to this amp envelope, and whereas it's normally on full decay and the sloping decay shape, just turn the decay shape to gated and the decay to zero. Then try it again. And. Blammo! Dead stop! Pretty violent, really. The samples I've used are four kind of one shot triggered samples down the bottom a zoomy one, an explosion with a bit of reverb to replace the need for a crash, since I felt it was cool not to use a generic crash sound for once. This string hit sample which I've pitched down an octave by turning the pitch knob to fully left, which is in the key of C. See the pitch knob here? That fits in the song, which is also in C. Then we've got this sound on its own. Kind of sounds like you kicked over a bin, but with a bit of tape echo and filtering. Sounds convincingly like you walked through a portal into an apocalyptic wasteland. At least that's what it sounds like when I step through foreboding vortexes. But yeah, make sure that the feedback is nice and high on that tape echo to maintain the echo, and the dry wet is enough so the first hit is still louder than the tail of the sound, otherwise it sounds a bit strange. See? Stranger than the aforementioned apocalyptic portal. The filter I've just kept on low pass to make it gradually less high pitched, as it gives that cool impression of distance. Remember, Low frequencies travel faster and more effectively over distance, and as such, the further a sound gets from you, the bassier it will become. I totally thought about it that much when creating the sound and didn't just add effects until it sounded cool. So, on the next row, we've got this eerie sample that I wouldn't be surprised if it was a field recording of a ghost trapped in a vacuum cleaner. The first reverse sound that I've carefully pitched up to a C from its original F. So it matches the key of the song. A riser sound that's a bit longer than that previous one. Keeps going for a while. And another nice high pitched reverse. That's quite eerie. I think it was a piano note reversed. And lastly, I've got that sound I've resampled, but I'll come to that in part two. Now, if we take a look at the sequencer, and scroll down to the effects, you can see I've sprinkled some sounds on different note lanes with names to help me remember what each one is when arranging effects. I've used that pitched reverse, for instance, a few times quite quietly. Remember, you can uh, change the volumes of different pads, different samples, with the level knob here in Kong. It's quite easy. But yeah, that just adds that sudden je ne sais quoi to the beat, 
and I'll talk more about the arrangement of the effects in day six, but I'll just say that it's generally a good idea to end a reverse with a hit, as you can see here. Got this one, if I solo out. Got this reverse, leading up to an explosion hit. Otherwise, it's like a big build up to nothing, akin to expecting an Xbox 360 for Christmas and ending up being stuck with a plain old PS3. I'm joking, I'm not really an Xbox fanboy. I still own a PS2 and a PS1, as well as a Wii, Xbox 360, DS, PSP, Xbox, GameCube, N64, Dreamcast, Sega, Saturn, Mega Drive, SNES, Master System, NES, Game Boy Advance, and Game Boy Color. But enough about my friendless childhood. We'll move on to part two, where I'll explain about the wonders of resampling.